Hey there, I'm Lucas Bond with the Missouri Department of Conservation. And today we're going to talk about CWD myths. I mean, there's a lot of myths out there about CWD. And we're going to try and address a few of those today. And I'm very happy to be joined with joined by MDC's Deb Hudman. And she's going to kind of address those and, and answer some of those and kind of give you the facts and what's right and what's wrong, what's true, what's not. So let's turn this around and we'll get to talking with Deb. All right, Deb, so we're talking CWD myths. So one of the big myths that go around that people have been really talking about saying that, you know, chronic wasting disease in deer has always been here and always been on the landscape. Is that correct or is that just a myth? That's a myth. And if CWD had always been on the landscape, then we would not be seeing this increased or this expansion of CWD around the state. Um, we've been, we've even sampled for CWD prior to our first detection. We, we acquired over 30,000 samples prior to the first detection. And now that we've had, it's been detected in the state for about 12 years. So we've been seeing a progression of this disease across the state. So, um, if that was, if it's always been here, that wouldn't be, we wouldn't be witnessing that kind of expansion. And that's why it's so important, right, that we manage this disease. Absolutely. Good deal, Absolutely. good deal. And another myth, you know, is, you know, if, if they're deer, why don't we see sick deer? I mean, we should see sick deer if they have CWD, right? Is that a myth or is that true? So, CWD is a very slow progressing disease. It can take up to 24 months before the deer even shows symptoms. It doesn't mean that the deer is not sick or not suffering consequences of that disease, but we don't see it outwardly. Um, so for instance, if we compare it to humans who have heart disease, we can't tell if their arteries are being clogged, right? We don't know that they're potentially gonna have a heart attack. We can't see that. Um, so that this disease is similar in that it's, it's causing issues with the brain. So it's a neurodegenerative disease. So these prions, they clump together and they form these little holes in the brain matter, which makes the, disease, the deer less responsive and their motor skills are effective. And so all those things that typically kill deer do so at a higher prevalence than deer that aren't infected with CWD. So things that typically kill deer like auto collisions, predation, and uh, hunting happen to deer more readily with that have CWD as opposed to those that don't. And that's why, that's why then you would suggest it's very important to get your deer sampled, right? Because of those that are more than likely to, the deer to be killed would be from could be CWD related. Absolutely, yes. So, in fact, all of the sick deer that have been reported to us this year that we've tested have been negative for CWD. So, it's really important to get them tested because they don't necessarily outwardly are showing those symptoms. You know, and as we're going on this myth, this isn't a myth per se, but since we're ta on the topic of usually you won't see signs of CWD until 24 months, like you suggested. The big thing is, is those that do see sick deer, it's important to report them, but usually sick deer that we're seeing are EHD a lot of times, right? This time of year in particular, is, there's a lot of them that are EHD. There's also a lot of brain abscesses that occur. There's lumpy jaw. There's a variety of reasons that, that deer normally die from, yeah. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Deb. And thank you all for tuning in and learning more about the myths of CWD. You can find more information on our website at mdc.mo.gov forward slash CWD. Thank you very much and have a great rest of the day.